Thank you, God. The hour has been well spent. And well spent. And I thank God for what has already gone before. If you just give me a few more of your minutes, I'll say a word and sit down. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn with me to uh, the eighth song. Psalm number eight. children are prosperous hey, so. and the grandbabies are growing. Say so. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. Easy to worship God when our educational goals are being achieved and our career goals are emerging. It's easy, I say, to worship God when cancer is in remission uh -huh. and when we are living with reasonable health oh, and yeah. strength. Yeah. But far too often, our praise is predicated on our predicament, mm. 
I said I'm in the right house this morning. Yes. 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 When we are hurt, grieving, or brokenhearted, mm -hmm. our praise gets weak, mm -hmm. and God gets a half-hearted praise. Mm -hmm. When our marriage or our relationship with our intimate other gets a little rocky mm -hmm. or a little weary, we are no longer quick to lift up holy hands and praise the holy God. Come on and help me. Yeah. When the money quits coming yeah, and the bills are no longer being paid on time or in full, mm. come on, we have a tendency to quit giving yeah. God in excellent praise. Yeah. In fact, some of us even quit coming to church. Amen. Yeah. And if we come, we quit worshiping. We become bench members. And few participants. While others worship, we watch. That's true. That's true. That's true. We quit worshiping with our mouths. We quit worshiping with our hearts. We stop worshiping God with our tithes and with our offerings. We quit worshiping God with our works. And when our praise gets muffled and our worship gets stifled, we are no longer offering an excellent praise. Our praise becomes predicated on our predicament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is a spiritual schizophrenia in the church. And this morning, David helps us to remember that should never be the case because we serve an excellent God who's always deserving of an excellent praise. David makes it clear why we ought to be, uh, why we ought to bless the Lord at all times and why his praise should continually be in our mind. It's believed that this is the first song that David ever wrote. But it's not known at what point in his life that he wrote it. Uh, Brother Wallace, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask David uh, if he wrote this hymn while he was yet a shepherd boy, Come on, attending his father's sheep. Because if that's so, then I'll know that when he wrote this song, he didn't know anything about being king. And he wasn't thanking God for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That would also mean that at the writing of this song, he had not fought with Goliath. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so he was not thanking God for delivering him mm -hmm. from his giants. Uh -huh. And if that's so, at the writing of this hymn, uh -huh. David was not married, uh -huh. nor had he stolen another man's wife uh -huh. and had the husband murdered. Uh -huh. And therefore, he was not praising God for forgiving his adulteress and his murderous ways. This would also mean that his daughter had not been born and therefore had not yet been raped and his son had not been murdered nor had the other son tried to steal his kingdom. And so David in this song was not thanking God for straightening out a family mess. No, by writing this song, David reminds us that we should worship God, that we should thank God, that we should praise God just because he is God. Yeah, yeah. David suggests that we should praise him because of his excellent greatness. That we should praise him because of his excellent name. That we should praise God for his creative power. And that we should worship God for his great mercy towards us. Envision with me the night that David wrote this song. I can see him out there on a on a Moabite heap, keeping his daddy's flock by night. Uh -huh. And in a reflective moment, he lays down his rod and his staff, and he leans up against a Lebanon tree uh -huh. and gazes up into a starry Serbian sunset. Uh -huh. uh, the moon is a radiant nightlight. Uh -huh. The stars are pulsating against a black, glassy sky. And as David loses himself in this majestic display of God's creative power, he cries out, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, now I can relate to this because I remember in the fall of 2007, when I was among a group of 60 pastors ministering in Guyana, South America, we were conducting a revival service in the bush one night. It was pitch black. And all we had were lanterns and flashlights to guide our way. We boarded little boats, traveled down a crocodile-infested Essequibo River in the dark. 
And when we arrived at our destination, we had to climb up on a hill. Mm. And when I got to the top of the hill, I looked up mm. and I trembled. Mm. See, there was no, there was no, uh, 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 no gases, no nothing shielding that night sky. And the, the, the stars were like bright lights that you could just reach up mm. and touch. Yes. And I'm afraid of heights, so I got scared. I, I, I trembled. I had to look down, I had to look away. But David was accustomed to this kind of majesty. He couldn't help but praise God and begin to cry out in the spirit, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. In church like David, we ought to praise God for who he is and not just for what he has done. And if you praise him for that, somebody who knows that you are going through some stuff. Somebody's going to ask you, with all that you are going through, why are you praising God like that? Mm -hmm. That's your opportunity to tell somebody that you praise God because of his excellent greatness. Mm -hmm. You know something about his excellent greatness. Thank you, Jesus. Because you know something Thank about his excellent name. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's your time to tell them that his name is Yahweh. Yes, sir. Yes. Or in the English translation, his name is Jehovah. Yes, sir. And Jehovah or Yahweh is the same name that God used to identify himself to Moses uh, at that burning bush yes. on the backside of Mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was there when God told Moses to go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And when Moses asked God, who shall I say sent me? God said, tell them that Yahweh, which was translated I am, that I am sent you. In other words, God defines himself in his name. See, we can't define God. I can't define God. Whenever we try to define God, we confined God. But God by his name tells us something about who he is. The name I am tells us that God is who God says that he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am tells us that God can do whatever he wants to do. Hmm. God can be whatever he wants to be. And when we understand that I am is derived from the verb phrase to be, we come to realize that indeed he is, he was, and he shall be. That he is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending and everything in between. It tells us that he is our one necessity in life. And from him flows everything else that we need. It tells us that before the mountains were brought forth, or ever he formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Yes. The old saints put it this way. They said, he's so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. He's so wise, you can't get around him. you got to come in through the door because he's an almighty God. But more importantly, God's name, I am that I am, tells us that I am to you what I say that I am. I am, I am to you whatever you need me to be. Whatever you need, God says, I am. If you need a doctor, I am. If you need a surgeon, I am. If you need a lawyer, I am. If you need a comforter, I am. In the midnight hour, I am. If you need a God to lift you up, when you are weary and carry you when you're worn, I am. If you need a tutor, I'm there 24 7, 365 to encourage your heart and to increase your understanding. I am. If you need a pastor, I am the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Whatever you need, I am. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider and your provision. If you need it, I've got it in abundance. I am Jehovah Nisi. I am your banner. And so you don't have to worry and you don't have to fret. When the world breaks out in your life, just be still and know that I am. I am God. I'll fight your battles. I'll wage war with your enemies. I will destroy and I will defend. I am. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am the God who grants 
you peace. Yeah. When confusion breaks out in your home, yeah. when trouble reigns on your job, yeah. when there is turbulence in your spirit and violence in your heart, yeah. I am the great peacemaker. Yeah. I am the one that stands in the bow of your soul yeah. and tells the wind and the waves, peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. peace. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. I am the one. Who holds back the night. Yeah. And I am the one who can cause the sun to sit steep. Yeah. I am your peace. Yeah. His excellent greatness is manifested you, in his excellent name. Yeah. I am that I am. But not only that. David goes on to teach us that his excellent greatness is also manifested in his excellent nature. In that meditative moment on that hillside, David said in verses 3 through 5, When I consider thy heavens yes. and the work mm -hmm. of thy fingers, mm -hmm. the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, mm -hmm. what is man mm -hmm. that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man yeah. that thou visitest him? For thou hast made us a little lower than the angels. The NIV Bible says, He made us a little lower than heavenly beings. The Revised English Bible, the New American Bible, the New Jerusalem Bible says that He made us a little less than a God. And the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible says that He made us lower than God. And that's what it says in your Bible, it's all right. Because it's consistent with what the Word of God tells us in Genesis. That we were made in God's image. And we were made in His likeness. It is consistent with the words of the psalmist who said we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. It's consistent with the words of Jesus who said in John 10, 34, Is it not written in your law, I say? Ye are gods. God made us like him. He made us holy. He made us righteous. And he made us pure. We were godlike. We were not born into this world angry and ugly. Come on here. Racist and sexist, prideful and boastful. When we began uh, this earthly walk, we began picking up the junk of this world. And our souls became sullied with sin and our sin nature began to overshadow the God in us. Yeah. And as a result, the things that God put under our charge, we began to mess up. Jesus. David asked, what is man that thou art mindful of him? In other words, David says, Lord, while I recognize the glory and the dominion that you have given us over all creation, Dominion over the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Dominion over the sheep and the oxen and the beasts of the field. While I am mindful of the awesome power and the awesome responsibility that you have placed in our hands, I am equally mindful of my shortcomings. Amen, lights. For the more I look at your excellent greatness, the more I see the great deficiencies in me. Somebody ought to take a good look at God this morning right. and ask yourself, in essence, uh, David says, the more I look at your holiness, mm -hmm. the more I see my hatefulness. Mm -hmm. The more I look upon your righteousness, the better I see my foolishness. Mm -hmm. The more I marvel at your faithfulness, uh, 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 the better I see my faithlessness. Mm -hmm. And the longer I gaze upon your mercy, the better I see my mischief. Mm. Is there anybody here with a Davidic-like testimony? Mm. Anybody here honest enough to testify, Lord, you have given me a beautiful life, yes. but I have failed to live it fully yes. to the glory of God. Yes. Lord, you have given me beautiful children, yes. but I have not always demonstrated before them the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Lord, you have given me a great gospel fellowship and yeah. new sisters and brothers yeah. in the faith. But I have not always loved them like you have yeah. loved me. God, yeah. you thought enough of me in spite of
of me to make me a leader in your church, a minister, a steward, an elder, a bishop, a secretary, a choir director, a deacon, a, a trustee. You, you entrusted me with leadership in your church. But I, I, I lead like I want to when I want to. If I want to. Come on, preacher. Have mercy. Have mercy, Jesus. Lord, who am I? That thou art mindful of me. Why, Lord, do you continue to fool with me? By writing the song, David reminds us that this great God, this excellent God, has such a loving nature and such a forgiving spirit that even though we keep messing up, he keeps right on blessing us. And because of his forgiving nature and his loving kindness, every day we receive new mercy. I said every day. We receive more grace. And every time we fall down, God dispatches an angel to pick us back up. It's amazing. I said it's amazing. God has an amazing nature that is full of an amazing grace. I said it's amazing. I wish I had just one witness today. Somebody who would testify with me that God's grace is amazing. It's amazing how I keep messing up, but he keeps on dressing me up. It's amazing how I keep letting him down, but he keeps lifting me up. It's amazing how I keep dropping the ball, but he keeps putting me back in the game. I said it's amazing. If it hadn't already been written, I would write amazing grace. How sweet a son that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see you. Through me, danger, all that stand. I had already come. It was God's grace that brought me safe this far. And His grace that will lead me home. How do I know about God's excellent greatness? It's manifested. In his excellent name. Yes. And it is evident in his excellent nature. Yes. I'm fitting to that. But as I take my seat, I've got one more question. If God is an excellent God who exudes an excellent greatness, bears an excellent name that bespeaks his excellent nature. Who among us is able to give God an excellent praise? Amen. 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 David poses this question, but he asked it in another way. In Psalms 24, he says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? And then he answers the question. Come on here. He says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying you can offer God an excellent praise only if you live an excellent life. Come on now, sir. Yes, sir. Not a perfect life. Not a good life but an excellent life. Mm, Jesus. A life of virtue and integrity. A life of honesty and purity. A life of morality and liberality. Mm. A life of service and a life of sacrifice. A life that gives and looks for nothing in return. A life that honors God in all that you do and in all that you say. Living that kind of life is an excellent life, capable of giving the giver of life an excellent praise. Amen. I'm going to sit down. But I'm so glad that David is not the only one who knows something about the excellent name and the excellent nature of our God. In the New Testament, John, the beloved disciple, wrote about it when he said, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And because he loved us, because of his excellent nature, God allowed his son to die in our, for our sins. He allowed evil men to drag our Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall. They whipped him. They beat him. They spat on him. They stabbed him. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. But because of God's excellent nature, he allowed his son to die that you and I might live. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head, and then he died. But because of God's excellent greatness, he gave his son power to lay down his life and then power to take it back up again. And because of his excellent greatness, early on the third day morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands, and God placed all things under his feet. God has exalted him and give him a name above every name. Yeah. And now at the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on somebody. Yeah. Now at his excellent name of Jesus. Yeah. Every knee shall bow. Yeah. And every tongue must confess. Yeah. That Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The Bible says there is no other name under the heaven. Given unto men. Whereby we must be saved. There is something about that name. Does anybody know that name? I said there is something about that name. When you call on that name, when you call on that name, something happens in your life. There is power in that name. There is healing in that name. There is deliverance in that name. There is joy in that name. There is hope in that name. Does anybody know that? Yeah. 